And I think the Justice Dems, you being so intimately involved with that, was kind of a movement towards that, but with the idea of working within the party. Now, at, seeing the arc of how that went, do you think that that's possible? Uh, I don't, but I think that however not possible that is, it's even less possible to do a third party route because what a lot of people don't know is that when we were considering starting Justice Democrats, it's not like we didn't consider the third party idea. In fact, that was like the primary idea at first. And when, but when you're mm -hmm. actually going to do it, like it comes time to actually dot the I's and cross the T's and file the paperwork and do this and do that. What you realize is you hit a fucking wall at 100 miles an hour because however rigged it is against progressives and leftists in the Democratic Party, it's even more rigged to try to start some sort of third party, which is why, by the way, it's not like you haven't seen genuine good faith efforts to, like, do this the third party route. I mean, there's been a number of different examples. Back in the day, even Trump sure. was around with, what was it called, like the Reform Party or something back in the day in like the 90s or the 2000s. That was one example. Of course, you have the Green Party is another example, which they did better than almost anybody else in terms of getting ballot access. But I think they only got like 48 states or something like that. They have ballot access. Um, and then, of yeah, course, you, you saw have the... Uh libertarians libertarians right? you know you have the people's party which you know in within the past few years has like totally imploded they you know these we're talking about a track record of abysmal failure and it's not because uh the the people trying it are bad people i mean i guess in some instances they might be bad people but by and large people generally mean well and they're trying to create that kind of change that you and i are talking about but it's like here's the point if you're going to do the third party route which i'm not against in principle you first have to unrig the process, the third party route. So in other words, you have to find a way to get the ballot access, to do ranked choice voting so people don't look at these voters like, look at these parties like they're spoilers and these politicians like they're spoilers. And once you, and by the way, credit to Andrew Yang, I have a million disagreements with him, but that is what he's trying to do with his, what's, what is he called? Oh, forward party, where one of his big things is like, we got to do ranked choice voting. First, because I think what he understands is ain't no fucking forward party candidate has any chance in hell unless you first do ranked choice voting and first get ballot access for everybody. So I guess the only yeah. the reason why we chose the path we chose was because it's like you're asking me, do I want to run a hundred yard dash or do I want to run a fucking marathon? And I said, I'd much rather run the hundred yard dash. I got to run a lot less distance. So that's why we tried it. Sure. Now, having said that. And this is where a lot of people don't hear me when I say these things. I feel like, yeah, we own all the failures of Justice Democrats. Like, in every way, shape, and form that they came up short, you're damn right. It was, it was bad, and it was a fuck-up, and it, it was a problem from the inception, because I always talk about this. Well, we didn't vet for, which it's, I don't know how you can vet for it, but we should have found some way to do it. We didn't vet for, like, leadership qualities. We just vetted for, like, okay, who's gonna, who has the right policy ideas? You do? Great. You're in. But what we need is somebody who not only has the right policy ideas, but knows how to do strategy, knows how to do, because the whole idea was, let's make it like a left tea party. And they didn't use any left tea party tactics. The only time I saw them do it, to be fair and to their credit, is when they said there were, I think, only six of them, which is pathetic. It should have been way more. Only six of them actually stuck by the original deal on Build Back Better, where they were like, we're not going to vote for your fucking shitty traditional infrastructure bill unless you also do Build Back Better, which has elder care, which has right. universal pre-K, which has expanded child tax benefit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that was like one instance of like, oh shit, you did the right thing. That's wonderful. But they weren't doing it before that and they weren't throwing around their weight. They weren't playing politics. To this day, the thing that I'm calling on them to do, get 12 of you, 15 of you, if any of you have balls, if any of you are leaders, for the love of God, go meet with Joe Biden and say, you know what? You're not getting a single bill through Congress because we're going to fucking block it unless you break out your executive order pen and legalize marijuana right now. Do it right now. Uh, right. Abolish student loan debt right now. And they're not doing it. Now, I don't think that means, you know, it is literally impossible to do it right. I just think we didn't get the right people who were going to do it right. Like, I guarantee you, if I was in Washington, D.C., if I had run for office and I was in Washington, D.C., I would have done everything in my fucking power to rally 12 of us, have a clique of 12 people, and we're going to fucking go at them like nobody's business. And I don't care if the media smears me day in and day out and digs up my old tweets and makes fun of me relentlessly or whatever. So I'm not fucking budging unless you legalize marijuana, unless you eliminate student loan debt. So uh, the thing is, I think it's largely failed, um, but... I just think the other path would have been an even bigger failure a lot quicker. So that's my general sure. take on it. I I wonder how you would how how would you vet 
for someone's, I guess that is a leadership quality. How would you vet for someone's ability to resist the lure of joining the status quo? Because you, I mean, we saw it play out in real time with the Iron Dome flip and yep. Pelosi basically just dressing down AOC. That's, it was, it was, I can imagine what was said in that conversation was something like, look, your, this is the, your, your participation as a political entity is on the line here. This is not just a, a vote. If you, if the, if you vote uh, no on this, you are forever going to be, have a scarlet letter on you in this party. You're not going to move up the halls of power. Your little ascent is over. You know what I mean? I can just yep. imagine Pelosi is such a political entity that it was something like that. And she caved to it. Yep. She didn't have the balls to stick her finger up and say, fuck you. Yep. You know, something needs to change. We need somebody different. We need a different way. And it's not your old fucking corporate friendly way. You know, just anything. And I'm totally with you on that. People forget there's such a slim margin that they mm. could effectively hold up every fucking piece of legislation that comes out of anything. They That's could do right. It. They could hold it hostage and say, my vote on this is contingent on anything like you said. My vote on this is contingent on uh, an immediate canceling of student, student loan debt, immediate descheduling of marijuana, you know, uh, and there's a number of other things that uh, Biden could do with a stroke of his pen, um, you know. And by uh, the way, like he would do it. He would do it because if you give him a list of 20 fucking executive orders and say, I'm not bending unless you do every one of these, you know what happens? You get a meeting with him and he says, look, Jack, I can't do 20, but maybe I'll do 10 of them or maybe I'll do seven right. of them. That's what would happen because he's a wheeler and dealer. He's an old backslapping politician. And that's what they do. And so if he if. Mansion can throw his weight around and hold up fucking anything under the sun. You could play the same game from the left and they don't do it. And to answer your question, unfortunately, I don't have a good answer, which is part of the problem is that the only thing I would know how to go off of in terms of vetting leadership qualities is like their experience and their history. Like what have you actually done that shows like maybe they were affiliated with some sort of protest movement or whatever. And they've genuinely showed balls previously outside of that. I don't know what to go off of other than like intuition. You know, obviously the candidates sure. don't take the, the corporate money, so they're not corrupt. But then the other more important thing is like, OK, well, do you have the moxie to like actually take the incoming fire also from the media? Because that's another big part of the problem is that a lot of these people are they're narcissists and they do not like negative attention. They cannot stand negative attention. And so they don't know, to your point, not just put their finger middle finger up at Pelosi and say, fuck that shit. I'm doing what I know is right they also can't put their middle finger up to the media. They want to be beloved by the media. But if you're being beloved by corporate media, you're doing something wrong. They're supposed to fucking hate you. Look how they treated Bernie Sanders yes. when Bernie was running for president. There's a reason why the Washington Post ran whatever it was, 12 negative articles within the course of uh, a day because they were like, oh my God, this guy might actually do universal health care. We can't have that. We got to look out for the health insurance yeah. companies. So you should... You should swim in their hatred. You should love their hatred. Just like FDR said, I welcome the hatred of the bankers. You should welcome the hatred of corporate media. And not a single one of them, Paul, welcomes the hatred of corporate media. Not a single one of them. And by the way, like there are little instances here and there of individual courage, like Ilhan Omar, for example. She recently, she was the one politician to stand up and say, I'm not in favor of sanctioning the entire Russian economy, including the oil and gas, because that hurts regular Russians and regular Russians didn't do anything wrong. She was the only one to right. do it. What I want to do is take that moxie and have a group of 12 that can consistently do the right thing and throw their weight around. And it just hasn't come together in the way I wanted it to come together. And that's just sad. I, I think that the DNC is a fortress against that kind of movement. It will either subsume anybody that you throw at it or it will, uh, you know, make them irrelevant. It'll break up that, that group. So even I do think Ilhan has been the most consistently willing to go out on a limb of the kind of justice dem groups. Uh, but you know, we don't, we don't need one Ilhan. We need 12 Ilhans, you know, and we need them all to be in lockstep because there've been times that Ilhan has not, you know, uh, stood up the way that I thought yeah, she should have. They've but, all um, done that at one point or another, they've sure. all let us down, you know? And, but then they're, like I said, they're and, individual. And, and you can't, you, God. You can't really expect perfection out of people, but to me, the writing on the wall, to kind of bring it back to the original point, because I don't want people to think I'm trying to dodge out on your, your the, how we started this, which is why don't I vote and what's my position on that.